It feels like every every interview that we've done has touched based on how we as young people aren't really passionate about our education, basically. No, I didn't know any Omaha history besides like uh, the Malcolm X and everything like that. That's really the only thing I knew about it. No, I can't say I have. If I, if I did, I can't remember any, uh, any stories about Omaha's history. Before Project Ready, I did not know much about it. Being a kid in Omaha, you learn very little about Omaha. <laughs> Found out from Project Ready from my dad, who works at the Urban League. Uh, he works for Urban League, and so he was like, you're going to do this program. When it first started, I went in and I was like, uh, this is all right. But I really like it now, so. Um, I've never actually worked with a video camera before. That was a pretty big experience for me. Being behind a camera and recording has really um, had me learn a lot. I would like the interviewing process because I like, you know, asking people questions and getting to know about them and stuff. So that would probably be my favorite one. Or showed me the background of the city I was born in, which is kind of cool because I feel like I wouldn't have known that if I didn't become a part of Project Ready. Yeah, it did. I didn't know that we had so much going on like that, like with the um, Omaha Star and everything like that. I knew about the Omaha Star, but just to know like the background of it and everything. I would like people to know that the Omaha Star played a very important role in integrating this community. There were many places that would not hire African-Americans the school system, OPS, mm -hmm. they had a superintendent that felt that we did not have the cultural background mm -hmm. to teach on the secondary level. The star was exposing these things. What really did stick with me when we interviewed Dr. Washington and her telling us to um, get our education because it's something that no one can ever take from us. Education and journalism are very close, very, very close. Um, when you are an educator, you have a smaller audience that you are educating. But when you are a journalist, you got the whole world. And I think that that stuck with me because of how early she finished high school and how well she's doing now in her later life. Like learning about um, 24th Street and the railroads where I did not know that or the packing plants and how popular it was. I think it was Miss Michelle, the spoken word artist. I think there has been uh, a shift from uh, the trades, definitely. You don't see the number of people uh, in my generation or younger that went into that line of work. I think the ability to advocate for um, what you believe in is extremely important. So your ability to protest, to go to your local elected officials and uh, have your voice heard, those are very important. Those are high on my list as well. Uh, it's so important that we remember the history and the fight and the struggle of the civil rights movement and in order to make it better for you and me and for the families and the community. Putting all of our stories together and reflecting also on what, what is the current you know, kind of climate with justice, with 
uh, the civil rights movement is still in progress. And uh, um, all kinds of things that like our ancestors had started in this movement, we just need to, with young people, develop that leadership and keep pushing forward. Prior to uh, 1960 election, my mother and my father never had a chance to vote in a presidential election. They had to have a poll tax, and that's a, a mechanism to eliminate people of color. Poll tax means you had to have property. And a lot of people that grew up in the South, the Jim Crow South, did not own property. But uh, once my mom and dad got it to be a registered voter, you know, they cherished those uh, moments. I think interviewing Miss Thomas, Miss T, I think that one was just because the stories that she had and told us and everything like that. Um, interviewing Mrs. Thomas. In the past, I did a lot of marching, a lot of speaking against racism. So much of the struggle, there were so many. Some of the ones who are not well known worldwide, right here in Omaha, Mr. Charles B. Washington, taught me so much in the movement. I will never forget this, ever. When she told us one of the slaves got in trouble, one of the stories, one of the slaves didn't do something right, and they made him go out and and they told him go stand to a, stand uh, like next to his tree with his tongue out. And the reason I say slavery was so profound that my that my great grandmother told her that I shall never forget on how one of the men's slaves forgot something that was in the cotton fields. They brought him in to out of the cotton fields, stood him against a tree had him to stick his tongue out and nailed his tongue to the tree. She'll never forget it. Never. That still gives me chills. That will never, I will always remember that. I don't, oh God. Learning the history about Omaha has changed, like my view kinda, even though it's been in this short few weeks. But I went to my mom and uh, she knows uh, the president uh, currently, and she was telling me about uh, how he went from being the uh, chief of police to uh, Urban League. And, and so I knew a little bit about him, but not that much. So I learned a lot after that interview. My name is Thomas Warren. I'm president chief executive officer here at the Urban League of Nebraska. I joined the Omaha Police Department uh, in 1983, right out of college, and served 24 years. Uh, I was fortunate to uh, rise to the level of chief police. And so Whitney Young was actually president of the Urban League of Nebraska. It was his first job in the National Urban League movement uh, before he became uh, national president. His, his contributions to the, to the March on Washington, he, he actually had a speaking part during that historic event uh, there in 1963. Like at first, like Omaha to me, it seemed a little bit dull because there wasn't really that much going on in, in Omaha. But now I look at it differently than how I used to. Things that people have done in Omaha to help better Omaha and how much we have changed as a community. My purpose in life is to inform. It's also to keep up on what's going on and to let people know what's going on. That African Americans are tenacious and persevering people. Some of the worst atrocities have inflicted upon any group of people that we have been able to not only survive, but to build a life as an American citizen, not just an African American citizen. So although some of us have been left behind and some of us um, still struggle, uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and we've created that light, and I'm very proud of that. Do all you can, when you can, for people in need. Be sensitive, compassion, and go beyond what you feel you can do. I think that if you look at our community now and you look at our community historically, you will always have plenty of people to pull from that really have a serious, serious impact. And I think that's a legacy that uh, I think the work that I do 
is looking to continue is developing the next generation of leaders so we can keep up with the legacy of those who have come before us. Follow that dream because you could have been doing something else during the summer, but you are involved in a program and you want to make a difference in the lives of young people. And I wish all of you the very best uh, as you go through life. And I want to see uh, if you're members of the class of 2015, I want to see you walk across the stage. We're very proud of the work that we do here at the Urban League of Nebraska. Uh, we are an institution in the North Omaha community. Uh, I think uh, from the interviews that you've conducted, uh, you've learned more about uh, the history of Omaha and the history of the African American community uh, in North Omaha, uh, as well as the pride that, that we take uh, in our community. And so hopefully uh, your participation in this project has been meaningful and worthwhile. So this project brought a lot of uh, knowledge to me at least uh, about the African American uh, Society of Omaha. Uh, and I look forward to learning a lot more about that as well. Just thanks to my dad for putting me in this program. I mean, as long, you know, you know, come back here because this is where I was born and raised and everything like that and make an impact here, but also other places. Then I feel like I can stay the leader I am and have an impact on other people's life. And so I just want to help people realize that that's important, don't throw it away.